This is Algologic. We're going to talk about doing real-time data in connected cities with gateway defined networking. So what we mean by this is we're taking live data that's coming in from sensors that are located all throughout an urban city, operating on those in our FPGA cloud, and then applying that data and put, using it back in the city. So there's a huge demand for real-time data, um, starting with humans interacting with humans, to software that enabled humans to interact with desktop PCs, to cloud services, where there's massive volumes of data and they're connected with software-defined networking and can run machine learning, to algorithms that run in logic that allow us to make decisions in real time and use gateway-defined networking in order to do that. Algologic builds gateway-defined networking products. So gateway are algorithms that automate functions that are compiled into logic gates and implemented on FPGAs. Networking are interconnected devices that stream data, typically using Ethernet and wireless. And gateway-defined networking is the fastest way that we can build deterministic networking applications that are still fully programmable. So Agilogic's products start with IP cores that we synthesize into FPGA devices that go into cards, that go into servers, that go into systems, and go into the cloud. So Agilogic's key value store provides a framework for doing real-time data. It's an in-memory object store that's faster than software. And that combined with the Algologic Black Diamond system, which can acquire real-time data from sensors and stream it into the key value store. And finally, live data visualization dashboards that let us see this data, both on 2D dashboards and 3D dashboards. So the key value store is a way to associate keys and values, typically names, such as names of devices or sensors, with values that are typically numbers or conditions or locations. So for example, Algologic has a phone number and a directory. That's a key value pair. Uh, traffic lights located at City Hall, for example, can be red. The wind speed could be 12 and a half miles an hour. A car, an asset that's located somewhere in the city can have its GPS location tracked by the value. And stock prices can go up and down. And these values change. So traffic light can go to yellow, wind speed changes to 13 miles an hour, the car moves, the stock price goes up. And they can move again. And so in general, the data values are moving quickly and we can associate and find all of these data just by name of the key. This real-time data acquisition system, storage and visualization is collecting this live data from sensors in a connected city, streaming it over the network into a scale-out key value store and bringing that data back into visualization dashboards. It's a little more detail. This data that we're collecting is coming from things like wind towers and drones and motion accelerometers on bridges and traffic conditions. That Data is being streamed into the FPGAs in our key value store and then being written back out to our 3D dashboard and under the data that you saw in the buildings and controlling the dynamic price of energy back in the city. And so these connected cities uh, are safe, is that having fast response to events and modern infrastructure can solve problems before they get out of control. Um, we can build systems that are sustainable, is that by having tight control over energy, is that we can make best use of solar energy and wind energy. And we can use that energy to best effect by charging devices like electric cars. Uh, we can be very efficient. We can totally automate these services to make it easy to use and be able to visualize this data in environments like 3D worlds. And so in contrast of connected cities, is that there's some cities that are just model cities for building high-tech cities, such as Denver, Colorado, Austin, Texas, and Fujisawa, Japan. There's also cities that are renovating, and so they're improving the quality of life in these cities by adding smarts to them. So cities like New York and Detroit and Pittsburgh and San Jose are embracing smart connected cities and bringing that technology in to make life better. Some cities, though, maybe are falling behind, is that without having the infrastructure is that the buildings are burning down and the city's kind of falling apart. Now we'll do a live demonstration that shows our key value store our black diamond, and our 3D visualization systems. Um, Old Town is not a connected city. Old Town has coal power plants that run at high output even when there's not a demand for that energy, spewing emissions out in the air. Uh, a fire has been started in this building, but because we don't have fast real-time response, it's likely this building will burn down. Uh, this water tower had a leak, and because that leak wasn't detected, it caused corrosion, and that corrosion caused structural failure of the water tower. Behind it, power lines that run through the mountains, transformer blew up, and started a fire in the mountains. Again, these are all things that we don't want to see in our cities, and things that don't need to be there. 
So as we go through, we can start seeing a little, few differences as we leave the old city. For example, lights in this tunnel are turning on in response to a proximity. And so that's an example of having smart infrastructure that can respond to our needs. Traffic, for example, can be controlled. And so by having a global view of all the traffic of the city, we can optimize the flow throughout the city, not just each intersection. Uh, ahead of us, we can see live streaming market data. So Agilogic is known for providing ultra low latency market data and order processing for high frequency traders. Uh, this intersection, uh, we want to go into protected area of the city. And so this is different. A drone sees and identifies our car and can inform security that we're allowed to go through this intersection. As a result, the bollards that are to our left allow us to pass through this intersection. So now as we drive through this intersection, uh, we're going into the stadium area. And in the stadium area, there's a high density of population of people at the event as well as people in the city. And so in order to handle all of this traffic coming from the mobile devices and from the people is that we need 5G deployments. And so companies like CityPole are building 5G base stations uh, or towers for 5G base stations that blend in well to the city because they look like regular street lights. But at the top of these are 5G antennas so that we have dense uh, and plentiful bandwidth for the devices that are coming through. Uh, so now we're leaving the protected zone of the city and heading out. And so again, we'll see the bollards lower to let us exit this area and go forward. And so in the next part of the city, we're going to be visiting some monitored infrastructure. So Agilogic provides uh, Algo Central, and Algo Central allows companies such as civil engineers to monitor infrastructure such as buildings and bridges. And so on these bridges, they install tri-axis accelerometers that can measure very fine motions in the X, Y, and Z direction. And so as the bridge has slight vibrations and shaking, which we're showing with the accelerometer, these can be brought back into the cloud and analyzed in the frequency domain, and we can look for fine harmonics that can be early indicators that our structures are failing. We're driving an electric car, and this electric car needs to be charged up. And so in our connected city, we have renewable energy coming from wind towers. And so these wind towers uh, generate energy when the wind's blowing, and we want to encourage consumption of the energy at that time. So by having dynamic pricing of the energy, we can encourage our electric cars to charge at the times when energy is most plentiful. Uh, a little bit further down, there's another charging station. This one's powered by solar. And so at the solar power station, as the sun comes out, which we're showing by having more light on the solar panel, the price of energy, again, is being repriced, and it's been going lower with more sun. So in this demonstration, we saw a couple of key things. We saw the black diamond uh, acquiring real-time data from the sensors that are on this table, streaming that data into our cloud, and implemented on an FPGA, the zinc. Uh, the next thing we saw was the key value store. So Agilogic has implemented our key value store in FPGA logic that runs on the PAC card. Lastly, the key value store um, is the in-memory database, also implemented on a data center class platform called the Xilinx Alveo. This shares live data uh, from IoT devices that come in, can be used for real-time analytics with inference, and allows live visualization of the data. So what you saw in the demonstration was the black diamond that was acquiring real-time data it was bringing in data from multiple types of sensors, time stamping data with GPS precision, and streaming that data over the key value store with a VPN so it's safe. And that entire system is implemented on an FPGA. And we did a comparison of how the key value store performance was when it was implemented in traditional software with the best optimized software that we could with kernel bypass and on an FPGA. One metric was latency, is that the latency in processing software was the slowest with quite a bit of jitter. And so when you're writing or reading data, it can be delayed, and it can be uh, have long tails. Uh, optimized software can be a lot better, um, much less lat latency, still some jitter. But another order of magnitude comes by putting it in the FPGA, which gives us the best latency, and effectively no jitter. And so in general, the latency that we get with the FPGA, or gateway-defined networking, tends to be 14 to 88 times faster than the kernel bypass. We get the best throughput, so 3 to 13 times faster throughput per server and low power, 13 to 21 times less power per server. And so we've been able to use the key value store in the black diamond to look at the data from accelerometers, look at data from drones, handle live market data, and do dynamic energy pricing from wind towers and solar. And so in general, the features of Algologic products are that they're fast, best-in-class latency, unique FPGA end-to-end -end solution. Uh, they're flexible, is that they BDR integrates with all types of sensors. 
uh, scalable. We can handle millions of nodes, hundreds of thousands of dashboards for doing visualizations and analytics. Um, very cost effective, a low capital expense, but a very reduced operating expense. And so for people that are trying to build and handle large amounts of data, they can avoid high cloud usage fees by having data stay local with a small footprint of an FPGA key value store. The data is safe and secure, uh, VPN encrypted end to end, and it's future proof. Because it's simple in FPGA, it's still fully programmable. So if you want to learn more, uh, come visit us at AlgoLogic on the web, algo-logic.com, on Twitter. Call us by phone, send us an email, or visit us in San Jose, California.